What's up guys, James Bombs here. So today I'm doing a video on, this is one of my uh, favorite beers, just so you see here. Yeah, if you're in on Terrible, uh, it's a Waterloo Dark, it's one of my favorite beers. I don't know, check it out if you're feeling it. Um, anyways, we'll just uh, crack this baby open here. There we go. So anyways, um, somebody was asking me to do a video on how to grow, like what you're doing on the, uh, to growing inside uh, your palms. So like if you live in a cold northern climate, uh, keeping them growing through the winter. So uh, that's pretty much what this is gonna be. So um, let me set this down here. So basically these right here uh, are all this year. Uh, well, some of these, well, yes, they're all this year. These were from uh, earlier, like more in the spring. Uh, sorry, not that. This, this, and this was from the spring. Uh, with those spring seeds, they were uh, uh, royal, royal seeds that I got from uh, Christian Faulkner, Palm Father. So, uh, but other than that, basically everything here. This is the hydrogen peroxide one. The update. I've just been bringing. The, like I just kept this inside because I did that little uh, test on it, and I just didn't want to put it back outside and see if if no bugs uh, went back in the soil, but uh, that was, you gotta check out the video. So I basically have been watering this tree with only hydrogen peroxide, so, and it's working good. So um, these are all from uh, like late September, early August. Um, these are just seeds I brought home and I grew them all. These are all Washingtonia robusta. Well, these are Washingtonia robusta. Um, these are, this is, those three are royals, those three that I had there. Um, I just have them here because I'm giving them light because I, I only have a couple of them. Uh, I had a lot of seeds, but I didn't have that many germinate. Uh, and then this is uh, the Reclinatus uh, from, uh, I don't know if you watched any of my videos, but uh, um, from uh, Leaky Tiki where I go in the, every summer uh, from our uh, like a summer vacation club. Um, basically, these are all the Reclinatus. So they're just hybrid Phoenix, basically. I mean, I'm sure they're all mixed. Because uh, some of them, this one's really small, this one's really big, and they're all different sizes. But regardless, they're just your generic Phoenix. There's there's some coming up. This it's hard to see. There's some coming up everywhere in there, though. That's just any of them that pop. They're uh, really remote germinators. I kind of stick them in the soil when they pop, and then they they shoot the root down, and then they bring the the leaf up. Which washies do that, but they do it so fast you don't even really notice. You just kind of like put them in, and they're already growing. So. But those are, uh, this is how I grow them anyway. So put them in the baggie, then put them in here. And and then these, because they're all this year, these really never, these seen a few days outside, I put them out in the sun for a bit, but these are basically only growing under LED lights. So, uh, and you can get these lights. This one here is the $40 special on Amazon. It's pretty much the most popular one. You'll just, if you go on Amazon, you'll see. Uh, I could show you the badge, I don't know. Anyways, this is the, just their $40 grow light. It's got a switch. It's about as thick as an iPhone. Uh, it, it does a trick. It's 40 watts, so it's a very low power. Um, it's not spectacular, but uh, it definitely does a trick, especially for seedlings. It's perfect. So this is one of the first uh, things that you want to do when you're trying to bring your palm trees inside or just start them off because whenever I come home from Florida, it's the end of the season, so I always start them off uh, inside. Uh, anyways, so basically that's how they're sitting. But, so here's last year's batch. Now, these need a little bit more power. So these are, this is the lights right here. These are, I know what these ones are. Um, I could probably put the link down in the description if you want. Somewhere it has it on the side. Let me see if it says it. No, nowhere does it say it. Actually on the bottom, I think it does. I don't know, I don't want to look directly in the room, but somewhere on this light it says, like sun. So that's what these are called. These are like pretty much one of the cheapest thousand watt style replacement uh, for like a, a filament bulb uh, on Amazon. So they're called Like Suns and they're the 1000 watt model and they're dual chip, which is kind of cool. Um, obviously if you're growing weed, I'm not, but you can, you have your two switches here. So you have your bloom and your veg. So like if you, if you put it in veg and it's blue light, and then if you put it in, in just bloom, it's red light and and you do both and you red and blue. Um, obviously for palm trees, I just do both because it's more power. And you hear the fan kick up a notch, but uh, basically the most important thing is when most people bring their palm tree in for the winter, they bring them in and they sit it right here by their window, which I have, 
and they sit it by the window. The window's either drafty, even if it's not drafty, it's fine. The palm tree has its temperature. The temperature inside a house is not what you would call great for a growing palm tree. When you put these outside in the sun, and they're sitting on your patio or whatever, and the sun is cooking that pot. Like, you, you know if you ever sat in the sun and you feel the sun like burning your skin, um, and even if it doesn't, like you just set a cup of water out there and it gets so hot, your car, you know, you leave your dog in the car or something and people say you kill your dog. Like that's like the heat from, uh, from just letting the sun bake something. It's a lot. So these plants are used to way more heat. So when you bring them inside at 20 degrees in most people's house, um, we keep our house a little bit hotter. We keep it more like 75, so it's more like 23, 24. Like you can actually see right there, that's the inside temperature of our house right now. So 24. So 24 is, is pretty warm, um, but still it's not like really hot for these things to like pump out the leaves. They will still grow, but not at, not at a really fast pace. But that doesn't really matter. It's fine if they're not growing fast, but it's too warm for them to sit dormant. So like if you put a palm tree in your garage right against like the warm wall of your house and it stays just above freezing, then most palm trees, um, as long as they're cold hardy, would be fine the whole time like that. They'd be cold, and so they're not really growing, they don't need a lot of light, they don't need a lot of humidity, they don't need a lot of anything. They really just sit in a dormant state. But when you bring them inside your house, they're getting dried out from your furnace, they're getting warm enough that they want to grow a little bit, but they have absolutely no sunlight. So the first thing they start to do is what this one has done. Like, I haven't given these much sunlight, but I can't really get in there. Here, I'll try to move this plant here, and I'll show you. So the first thing that most palms are going to do is they're going to they're yellow off their lower leaves. They're going to start cooking these off. Um, and that's for two reasons. One, they're, they're transferring the nutrients back into the tree. And two, they don't have, they're not collecting enough sunlight to sustain as much foliage as they have. So if you're bringing the plant in, I recommend you can either prune it if you want. I don't do that because I let them retrieve it. Some people say prune it. I, I don't really, I don't really know if it helps or if it doesn't help. But nevertheless, it's going to lose a lot of those leaves. And the ones that they make under under these guys, under these LEDs, are going to be a lot, uh, like, sort of longer and flimsier and stuff. But you can keep them going, and then you'll shorten them up in the spring. So what I do is just give them light, even if they're, like, like you see some of these back here. Um, they're not going to get a ton, but they're going to get a little. They just need a little bit of light. And what I do is I run these at nighttime. So you run them at night, uh, so the power is cheaper. So start them at 7 o'clock, and then you can run them all weekend if you want, or just at nights, every night. Just run them from seven to seven type of thing, like for eight o'clock, nine o'clock, whatever, turn them on, and let your plants get the light all night long, and they'll benefit from it. And pretty much just like they're outside, I mean, they'll just be growing slower because the temperatures aren't that warm. Um, and the other thing that a lot of people do when they bring in their palms in the winter, they kill them, because they water them kind of like they were watering them out in the summer, even if they water them less. It's probably not, it's probably too much. I mean, a palm like this, in a big seven gallon pot, that this one is in here, man, I wouldn't water that for at least a month, if not more. Um, I don't water them, even during that, like, even they're in a red solo cup, I at least wait two, three weeks, easy. I would say probably closer to a month. Um, just, just pick them up, and if they have any moisture in it, you can feel the weight, if you pick it up like this, and you feel the weight in it, then don't water it. They probably have water, honestly. They almost always do. And last but not least, the last thing I do is, these ones don't really care. These can take desert climate, Mexican fan palms. They actually, I've actually had one in my brother's basement uh, for an entire winter and, and I missed it only one time. So they can actually take ridiculously low humidity with a furnace running all the time, with very, very, very low humidity. They can take it. Um, right now it's still, there's still decent humidity in the house here. It's not ridiculously low. But most houses are probably going to be lower humidity. As you come more into the winter, they're going to get lower and lower and lower. Um, so all you do is just get a spray bottle from the dollar store and mist it with water. Just mist the leaves, mist the leaves. I missed the leaves yesterday. You can mist them every day if you want. Um, you don't really have to mist, like I said, Mexican Van Palm, but I still do. I mean, they benefit from it. They, it's still, having them all together like this helps a lot because they all collect the moisture regardless. Like they all kind of share humidity because they're through transpiration, they're putting off humidity regardless. Um, so when they're all in a cluster like this, they will, they will kind of keep each other more humid, but it, it definitely doesn't hurt. So spray them. I mean, the palm really only needs water. Like while well, food is, they don't really need a lot of food through the winter. So it, was, it really needs like three things, just the temperature that it needs the water and the light. So most people give it the water and the temperature, 
but most people give it too much water. And then the other problem that they do is they give it no light at all, or they have it near the thing here, near their window, which there's like three days uh, out of the week that are a little bit sunny, not even quite, and the sun's at such a low angle and it doesn't come directly in the window. So they basically end up with almost nothing. So buy one of these lights if you want to keep your palm trees alive in the winter. Um, if it's only one tree, buy the $40 one, whatever, put it right down. Don't be scared, uh, from my experience, to put the lights pretty much right until they touch the fronds. Um, you can, like, you don't want to really touch them because the surface gets a little hot, but put them right as close as you want because you're just going to get to this part and everything else will get a little bit less. You're going to get more growth. I mean, these, like mine, are all climatized to the full sun. No matter the best lights you buy, they're not going to be as intense as the sun, so, like, nowhere near. So you can buy ones that probably could burn your palms. Uh, you'd have to unload your whole wallet. They'd be thousand dollar lights or more. Uh, so if you want to spend that, and and then you could probably put like one or two. The other thing is just be careful using these. Only use them at night. And I have small children. I don't turn them on until I go to bed. Uh, you cannot look into these. They were, they're not good for your eyes apparently. I don't look into them. That's just what they say. If I'm playing around with these for any duration of time, I wear shades. Uh, so and I don't look up into them regardless. But uh, anyways. That's just some white tips and tricks on how to keep your palm trees uh, growing, uh, not a lot, but growing through the winter. Um, and if you wanted, what you can do is you can put them in a, in a room, a closet or something, do the same thing with the lights and, you know, put a space heater in there uh, or just have extra heat runs or whatever you want to do. Somehow just get the room hotter. You could do that and keep the room at around 80 degrees, so 25, 26, 27, something like that and keep them warmer and they would just grow a bit better but uh, make sure you have a fan then and stuff, and you, you know, when they're in really active growth, uh, then you can get more diseases and things, and bugs can flourish. Um, uh, one other thing, I'll do another video uh, completely on just bugs. One other thing what I would do is water them from the bottom in the winter if you want. Like, just fill up your bathtub is what I do, and put the palms into the bathtub, and just set them there, and let them just sit there for a little while, an hour or two, whatever, and the water will wick up through, the palm as opposed to watering it from the top because a lot of the eggs and larvae and stuff they always want to land on the top of the soil so that just gives them dries them out and and, and they need the moisture to, to sort of hatch and, and eat the fungus and things so doing that uh, you can do with hydrogen peroxide on the surface of your soil as well or some type of bug sprays and things that will kill them um, uh, or like neem oil or neem powder neem cake um, I don't want these really in my house next year. Hopefully I'll do a, green, a grow space outside, but I would recommend something like a neem cake or neem powder, sprinkle it across the top, or do it as you water, always water with neem, neem oil and neem cake and things like that. And that'll help uh, bring the hurt on the bugs. Um, they won't really hurt the palms. You'll just, you'll just be pissed off. Uh, I don't have a lot, so uh, I was actually pretty lucky. I, I got rid of most of them. I let the palms stay outside uh, and a lot of bitter cold, and that, uh, that kills off a lot of the bugs. So. Um, if you want to try that, that works as well, but uh, watering the top less definitely helps. Uh, anyways, the video is a little longer, but uh, I'm going to enjoy this uh, drink, and uh, thanks for watching, guys. So, uh, later.